Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Welcome to lecture 68. So, uh, we have just finished uh, the uh, perturbation analysis or general orbit perturbation theory. So, now we go into the uh, orbit determination problem. So, but before we take the actual orbit determination process, we have to go through the frames. Uh, different reference uh, frames are available for modeling the motion of the earth. And without that, uh, because we are interested in finding the orbit of the satellite, so therefore, reference frame it becomes mandatory to define. So, we have the uh, reference frame like um, uh, inertial reference frame, terrestrial, topo, uh, topocentric and various other sort of reference frames are there as per the need. And uh, there are uh, algorithms or the uh, equations available for transferring from one reference frame to other reference frame. So, in that process, uh, let us uh, start with uh, what the reference frame is there and the reference system. So, first we define the reference system and then we go for the reference frame. So, a reference system is a set of prescriptions, set of prescriptions and conventions together with modeling required to define at any instant of time a triad of axis. Okay, so how the reference frame will be formed? So, that defines the reference system. And currently, see here in this case, we have the ICRS, the International International. This is the example, International Celestial Reference System. This is an example of this, and. Uh, Okay, uh, we will discuss further uh, about this. So, reference frame. It is a practical realization. Of a triad axis. Triad axis means you have three orthogonal axes of a triad axis with given fiducial points. Fiducial points are nothing but reference points. Fiducial direction and points, fiducial directions with a 
triad of axis with given judicial direction, some reference direction, along which direction your triad axis should point. Agreeing with the concepts introduced in And the corresponding reference system. For example, I can have uh, ICRF, where ICR, as usual, it is, it is International Celestial Reference, F stands for frame. reference frame. So, for ICRF, International Celestial Reference Frame, is a realization of principles of the ICRS. Whatever the principle have been laid down in the uh, ICRS, so according to this, this frame is realized and this is the latest one. So, the, this is latest one. But before this, we have other reference frame. So, if, uh, uh, ICRF, which can be divided into two parts, this is called the BCRF and uh, GC. One is BCRF, another is GCRF. This is called the, or we can write other way. Here, ICRF. This is called the barycentric celestial reference frame, and this is called the geocentric And accordingly, you have the barocentric celestial reference system and geocentric celestial reference system. So, these are defined in terms of if uh, the general relativity becomes important here in the case where the large distances are involved. So, BCRF, this is the barycentric. As you know, the barycentric is the uh, center of mass of the solar system. And uh, GCRF, the geocentric, means it is uh, the center of mass of the earth. Okay. So, uh, these are defined these were defined in terms of metric tensors and generalized Lorentz transformation. Of course, this is beyond the scope of our course. Uh, we are not going to discuss all these things, but uh, conversion from one frame to another frame uh, general relativity, it plays its role. Okay. Special relativity deals with the case where so you have the absence of mass, but if once the mass is present, so the space time they get affected and therefore, uh, 
you, you have to take into account the general relativity in the, in the case we are dealing with the BCRF and the GCRF conversion between them. And the book by Siddleman, Explanatory Supplement uh, to Astronomical uh, You can just look into the explanatory supplement. Supplement. Uh, full book name I don't remember, but uh, this is by Siedelman, S I E D E D E L M A W N. Okay. It may be S I E D I. Okay, I will write the name of this, this Seidel, book by Seidelman, uh, spelling exactly I do not remember, but it is S I E D E L something like that, S I E D I is there or not I do not remember, but and then Okay, so that gives you, uh, if you look into that book, so you will become conversant with this topic of reference frame, how the time uh, is measured, organized and various other things. It is a thick book, uh, maybe of uh, more than uh, uh, 800 pages or may around uh, 1000 pages and uh, it gives all the great details, uh, all the things available. Okay, so uh, this ICRF, the International Celestial Reference Frame, so this is a kinematic realization. So, I will come to this point, what is the kinematic realization and what is the uh, dynamic realization. Okay. Okay, we can go to the next page. We can divide this astro inertial reference for form formulation in broadly in three categories. This extra galactic, in this category, your ICRF lies, okay. and moreover, this is a kinematic realization. So, it is a defined kinematically. In this, the fiducial points, the reference points are quasars and nuclei of galaxy of galaxies. which are observed using very long baseline interferometry. So, kinematic realization, no angular motion involved. Or no assumed angular motion assumed. Actually, what happens this uh, the quasars and the nuclei of 
galaxies, they, they are located at some 100 mega parsec. more than this mega parsec distance. So, uh, that makes it 100 mega parsec means 10 to the power 8 parsec. Mega is 10 to the power 6 and then 100. So, 10 to the power 8 parsec that makes it and 1 parsec is around 3.3 .3 light years. So, 3.3 .3 into 10 to the power 8 so, so many years. So, at such distance, those judicial points, which are the quasars, uh, these are the source of X rays, and uh, this nuclei of galaxies. So, they show almost no motion. Over the over one year, there may be. Uh, so, uh, it's a lying at a distance of. 3 into 3 light years times 10 to the power 8 means 3 into 3 times 10 to the power 8 light years distance. So, if something is lying at this much of distance and then it is almost it is not showing any angular motion. So, angular motion may be in the range of uh, 10 to the power minus 5 milli arc second. This is milli arc second. So, almost they are not showing any variation. Okay. So, if you have many points in the space and if you look from the earth and they are not varying, not showing any motion over years. So, you can easily fix a reference frame using those points. Okay. And this extra, this ICRF is based on that and so it is a, a center is lying on the barycentric what we call as the barycentric. So, at the barycenter it is center lies barycenter and shortly I will show you uh, uh, how it is a different from the other ones. Okay. Galactic this is based on on star catalogs such as FK5, FK4, FK3. So, these are old and uh, this is still uh, being used, but this is the latest one. Okay. So, FK5 this is called the fundamental catalog. F k stands for fundamental catalog and this k instead of a small c, this c there you replace it with k. So, here a number of stars are observed. So, stars are are serving as as fiducial points. And these are obtained through optical observation. Optical observation. And dynamical reference frame, it is a purely based on, we shall call dynamical, it is a if purely based on the dynamics of the solar system, solar system. So, as we know uh, that in the case of the solar system, we have the already we have gone through the perturbation theory. Okay. So, in the perturbation theory, we have the say the sun is here and around that the earth is moving. So, this is your sun and earth is somewhere here. Okay. So, this plane we have defined as ecliptic plane, but because the earth is bulged, okay. earth is moving here, earth is 
shown here. So, this is the equator. So, and this is the pole of the earth. Okay. So, intersection of the ecliptic and the, this is your ecliptic and the equator, this defines the point we call as the vernal equinox, which will show, I will show on the next page or maybe here also we can have a look. Say this is the earth and this is the earth equator. then the sun apparent motion it will appear like this. If you look from the earth, so this is the way the sun will appear to move. So, the points where it is cutting the equator that becomes your the line of vernal equinox or uh, this is your vernal equinox, vernal equinox which we defined at the 31st March. So, during the time of Christ, vernal equinox was lying in the constellation of Aries, which we call in Hindi, we call this as uh, the symbol we use, we call this as the ram, Aries means ram. In Hindi, we call this as the mess. Okay. So, uh, during the time of Christ, this vernal equinox, it was lying along uh, uh, the constellation of Aries, but currently it is lying uh, in the constellation of Pisces. Pisces, this is called the mean. Okay. So, currently it is lying in the constellation of Pisces. So, what happens that over the period because of the perturbation, this moves regresses. Okay. So, this point we will put a 0 also. So, this point shifts to in the backward direction here, in the westward direction. So, this is the westward, westward movement and this is called the regression. And you can simply say that this O n, this is the nodal line. O and uh, let us say this point we write as n. So, this becomes your O n is your nodal line here in this case. We will further explore this, uh, what is the precision, nutation or other things involved. But first we, we are discussing about the dynamical uh, reference frame. So, dynamical reference frame. In this case, the equation of motions are solved. Already we have done okay, the general perturb orbit perturbation theory. Equation of motion is solved. And you know in the multibody system, what we have discovered that a system which is free from system which is free from external force will have its center of mass either at rest or at rest or moving with uniform velocity. Okay, so, center of mass can be taken as a reference point because then it forms a non-inertial, uh, sorry, the inertial point. So, if a fixed uh, triad, say in the case of the solar system, if this is the barrier center, so if I take the origin here and take x in the gamma direction, okay, and write this as the x, y and z and this as the o. Okay. So, this forms an inertial reference frame, but under what condition? Now, if you look here in this point as I was telling that this point will regress, it will come here to this point. So, this is gamma 0, I have written here gamma 0. 
this point will be written as say gamma. Okay. It is a basically a sign of ram, so it is written in terms of gamma. So, therefore, this point itself is not fixed, it is a regressing on the equator of earth. So, if that is happening, then if we take the barycenter as the uh, barycenter as the center of the triad and uh, x direction along the gamma direction, then of course, this will be rotating as you see. And therefore, instead of doing this, this is fixed at this is taken at a snapshot, okay, a snapshot at j2000.0. So, what does this mean? This means implies this is January 1, 2000 at 12 pm. At this time, whatever the snapshot of the equator and the uh, the mean equator and the uh, this uh, the mean ecliptic, okay. Whatever the snapshot of mean equator, so this is a snapshot at day two thousand first of January. This uh, of mean earth equator or the mean equator or mean earth equator or the mean equator and mean ecliptic so this gamma is gamma zero is defined by this so this defines your gamma zero means this is the mean ecliptic what does this what does mean by mean is shortly this will also be clear and this is your equator and this is north pole which we call as the celestial we will not call as the north pole we will rather call as the celestial pole and perpendicular to the mean ecliptic this is called the ecliptic pole. Okay, so, while solving the dynamical system, what we find that uh, we get, if you remember, so the angular momenta is fixed, angular momenta of the system is a constant vector. So, this gives you a fixed direction either we can take this as the fixed direction or we can take the barycenter and barycenter is the fixed point let me write that also barycenter is the fixed point because it is a center of mass so it is either at rest or moving with uniform velocity. So, therefore, that makes it inertial. Uh, so, at a particular instant of time and therefore, this is not called uh, inertial because in fact, this frame uh, if you go by this, so you will see that this frame will recede okay, because you are always defining toward the gamma and therefore, we need to fix it at a particular instant of time which is done by writing gamma 0 at j 2000, at j 2000 we are fixing it. So, once we have taken the snapshot and and then fixing the frame, okay. so we will call it as the pseudo inertial, this is not perfectly uh, inertial, it is a snapshot. Okay. In that respect, your ICRS, the International Celestial Reference System, uh, the extra galactic, which is uh, which shows hardly any motion, so uh, and it is a kinematically realized because there is no equation of motion need to be solved here. Only the observation of some uh, quasars and galaxies are required using the VLBI. Okay. In this, in the galactic one, we require the position of the various stars and which are done using the optical observation and using that then you fix a triad 
and again the center is at the very center, but the direction you have to fix. Okay. And dynamical one here the direction is fixed using the vernal equinox. So, this is your vernal equinox. of J 2000 at any other date that will be also the vernal equinox, but not of J 2000 that will be of another date. So, this gives rise to various terms like the mean true of date or uh, what we call as the mean of date or uh, mean of J 2000 and so on many terms uh, these are involved. So, we will continue in the next lecture, we will stop here and we will again get back to this. Thank you very much.